What's up, everybody? This week, we are talking about how to stage your self-tapes. Last week, we talked about the fundamentals of a self-tape, which came down to all of the equipment and best practices for how to make a tape look the way you wanted it to look. And now this week, we're going to talk about some of the best acting techniques that you can bring to your self-tapes. So here we go. The first thing we're going to talk about is eye level. The camera above a character looking down is called a high angle shot. It makes a character look low status or weak or vulnerable or scared. A low angle where you're looking up at the character makes the character look taller and more powerful. Those are two things that you may not necessarily want to include in your self tape. Really, we want the camera and the self-tape to be a blank slate so that the only thing that we're thinking about is your performance. So you want the lens of the camera specifically to be right in level with your eyes, not above or below. The other thing that's going to help you out is you're going to want to look as close to the lens as you possibly can. Just to the left, just to the right, just to the left, just to the right. The closer that we can get to your eyes, the more we're gonna see of your performance. The next thing we're gonna talk about that's really crucial for all filmmaking, but also obviously now in your self tapes, is framing. Generally, you wanna have three fingers above the head. I've seen that trick before on somebody's YouTube channel, which I thought was great. The other method people use very commonly is the rule of thirds. I'll break the screen up in three different places so you'll see. You would want the top third of the frame to be going right through your eyes. Also with framing, you deal with how close you want the camera to be. I generally will do a close-up for film and television where the performance is much more grounded and realistic and subtler. I'll move the camera more to a medium shot, maybe from the the chest up like you see here or the waist up if it's a broad comedy like a multi-camera sitcom or if it's a musical theater audition. Most of the time in a lot of these auditions, you're going to want to be a little bit closer than you're comfortable with in a theater audition so that we can have better access to your eyes. If you're a dancer, they would want to see a full wide shot from the tips of your fingers to the tips of your toes if you were to reach your hands up. The next thing that we're going to talk about is action out of frame. This was a trick I picked up from Bob Krakauer and I've, uh, I, I swear by it. Oftentimes if you bring action or blocking into the frame, it's going to distract from the performance. We want to see your behavior. We want to see your eyes. Once you start doing a bunch of things, you know, you're like rolling a joint. Not that I know how to do that. You're rolling a joint, you know, in the frame. And then somebody in the audience is like either that's the best joint that person has ever seen rolled or it's the worst joint or it's clear they start thinking about thousands of different things that don't have anything to do with your performance oh i i have this really complicated prop okay it's gonna go i'm gonna pass this complicated prop underneath the frame there you go there's this complicated prop now the casting director and the producers and the people watching the tape aren't like why didn't he just pass a piece of paper instead of the important documents or isn't that supposed to be a piece of art why is it just a piece of white paper or you know, whatever they say. Love you. Really, really, really ridiculously good looking. This one, this next one gets even more technical here. This is something called the camera axis. So if you were to draw a straight line, I don't know how I'm going to show you this, but if you were to draw a straight line from the center of the camera to the center of my forehead, that's the camera axis. And crossing that camera axis is a very strong choice. If there are multiple characters in the scene, you're going to want to put one set of characters on one side of the frame and the other set of characters on the other side of the frame. That helps you to show that there's two different characters in the scene and that you understand the difference in the relationship between those two characters. To take this a step further, I also do some different things with how and why I use the camera axis. So knowing that the camera axis is kind of the anchor of the performance of the scene for a self tape, not always. If I have a shy character who is reserved or nervous, I might kind of shift myself this way and talk to my scene partner over here. And then there might be a moment when I 
consider that I'm going to open up in the scene. And so I think about a memory or I think about something. This is really well written. So in a scene, I'll often try and find at least one moment where I can cross the axis to open my performance up to the casting director. And it just allows some very simple structural rules so that you can help tell the story because it's really important that you show change through pictures. That's the best way for us to understand that the story is shifting and that events are happening and that things are affecting you. This is crazy, but I'm having feelings again. It, like, like some kind of 14 year old kid or something. I mean, you remember feelings, right? The final thing that's important to think about is your movement. I'm sure you've heard this hundreds of times, but in your self-tape auditions, it's really important that you feel grounded in the floor. It's not great to kind of have a lot of side-to-side -side movement or a lot of fidgety movement. It gets in the way of us really watching your performance and connecting with your eyes, and it uh, blurs the gestural movement that actually matters. So even if you have to put your hands in your pockets or you have to relax yourself somehow, just really feel anchored to the floor and play the scene that way as best you can. But know that there is one part of movement that you can really use in your favor, and that is moving forward or backward. So knowing that the camera is gonna stay in one place during the scene, if you want to really open yourself up or to put yourself on the line with another character in the scene, you can move in. And that makes you take up even more space in the frame and it brings us even closer to your to your spirit and to your um, emotional life or to whatever story that you're telling with that that choice hopefully this helped you to make better tapes i know quarantine and and shelter in place life is really weird all of my auditions have now shifted to wanting us to go on tapes and to do callbacks on tapes and it's really a new time for all of us and so hopefully some of you can can take this with you and make some some strong tapes at home whether you have the right light or you don't it's really important that you also are staging and blocking and and making smart choices about how to tell your story with the lens because that's what this is all about like or subscribe follow me on instagram uh, i'm also on tiktok and uh thanks for watching